بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Based on one's intention will one benefit in mal amal binniyat we are making tilawat of Quran let us try to get it right and correct now while we get a chance while Allah has given us this breath we are doing amal let us see that how these amal can be done properly a mechanic that is fixing a car make sure that the service is done properly so that the car on the road will run properly and give no inconvenience. Likewise, we've got a long journey in the Qabr on Hashar Akhirat and this vehicle of the Ruh, we need to repay it properly. So a person depending on his intention. So the Quran has benefit Hudal Linnas, it is a means of Hidayat and guidance, but it is how, what intention a person makes. As it Uthman radiallahu anh used to say, لَوْ طَهُرَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مَا شَبِعَتْ مِنْ كَلَابِ اللَّهِ That if your hearts were clean and pure, you would have not become satiated from the kalam of Allah. So when there's contamination in the heart, then a person does not engage in the Qur'an because the heart is contaminated with something else and it cannot accept nur. وَإِنِّي لَأَكْرَهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ عَلَيَّ يَوْمٍ And I dislike, I fear the day when a day comes لَا أَنْذُرُ فِي الْمَسْحَفِ That I cannot see the kalam of Allah. These were Sahaba, great luminaries. Yet, their concern and their worry for akhirat was great. One student was asked that uh, which ayah of the Qur'an do you remember best? So he said, Kulu washrabu, eat and drink, because he loved his food. And he was asked, which is your favorite ayah? Then he said, the ayah, Rabbana anzil alayna ma'ida min as sama O Allah send the dastarkhan from the heavens. So he loved his food, so that's what he's seen in Quran, to fulfill his desires and ambitions. So ikhlas, so when you've got this ikhlas, Ulama explain number one, that it will remove all grief and it will remove difficulties. And uh, the people of the Kahf, when they were in that situation and they were sincere in obeying Allah, though they were in a cave in desolation, Allah preserved them, protected them, protected their bodies and preserved their deen as well. So ikhlas. Secondly, it is a means of help from the enemy. A person will be protected from the enemy. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amnu idha laqeetum fi'atan That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la'allakum tuflihun You will be protected. Innama yansurullah hadhi al-ummah bidha'ifiha Allah helps this ummah because of the weak of this ummah. The weakness, the dua, their salat wa bi ikhlasihim and due to the ikhlas and sincerity will Allah's help come. Number three, it is a means of protection from Iblis where he said that uh, I will la'ughwiyannahum ajma'een I will take them all astray illa ibadaka minhum al mukhlasin except the sincere servants of Allah. So when a person has sincerity, then he will be protected. Yusuf السلام, was alone with Zulaikha. Lawla al-ra'a burhan rabbi kathalika li nasrifa anhu su wal fahsha. Allah protected him from that haram. Why? Innahu min ibadin al mukhlasin Because of the sincerity. So the doors were closed, there was no chance, no hope, no way out, but his attention went to Allah. Allah opened every door and Allah not only did that, but Allah opened the door to an alibi where he was, a, baby test, a baby's testimony was in his favor. So 
a person should do all the amal what ikhlas what sincerity number 4 a person will be given shafa'a and intercession of nabi alayhi salatu was salam as'adu an-nas bi shafa'ati yawm al-qiyamah man qala la ilaha illallah mukhlisan whoever says this la ilaha illallah with sincerity i will intercede on their behalf number 5 a person's sins will be forgiven and they will get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the hadith of Bitaqa where inna Allah sayukhallisu rajulam min ummati ala ru'usil khala'iki yawm al-qiyama Allah will distinguish a man from my ummah before all of the creation on the day of qiyama. 99 scrolls will be laid out and each scroll will be as far as one's eye can see. Then he will be asked and tunkiru min hadha shay'an do you reject anything do you deny any of this has any of these records incorrect you will say ya allah i do not deny anything then you will be asked afalaka udhrun do you have any excuse fa yaqulu ya rabbi la oh allah i have no excuses then he will be told that no oppression will be done to you and you will not be wronged. Then a bitaka, a scroll, a, a document, a card will be brought out and on it will be the shahada. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. And it will be said, bring the scales. He will say now, Ya Rabbi ma hadhi al bitaka ma hadhi al sijillat. That what good is this one piece of paper next to all these scrolls? So it'll be said, in la to the lamb. No oppression will take place. The scrolls will be put on a scale and the card on the other side. And the card will outweigh the scrolls. So ikhlas and sincerity has its effects. There was a group of scholars that were traveling through a village in Pakistan and they reached a village where they came upon some people who told them to visit the graveyard and they smelled a fragrance coming out of the newly dug graves. So the villagers asked the scholars if they knew the reason and the scholars decided to meet the family members and find out what he used to do and they discovered that he did not know how to read the Qur'an at all. Otherwise, after Fajr Salat, he would just sit with the Qur'an, put his fingers on the verses and say, My Allah has spoken the truth. Yeah. Put his finger on every ayat. My Allah has spoken the truth. Sadaqa Rabbi. My Allah has spoken the truth. And the ulama said that this one deed was the cause of that fragrance emanating from his qabr. So intention, and we said intention of taqwa and uh, when reciting Quran, number four benefit of taqwa. Ya ayyuhal alladheena amanu attaqullaha wa aminu bi rasuli yu'tikum kiflaini min rahmatih. That a person who has taqwa, he will get twice twofold reward uh, in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah's mercy will be double fold. And uh, this is with regards where Nabi alayhi salam said that the Muslims, the Mu'mineen, the Yahud, the Jews and the Christians is like a person who took up employment and he was told you will be paid so much. And from the early morning till midday he worked. Then he said, La fi ladhi. The amount you told us is no need for, for us. So then they will be tell, told, La taf'alu, just work a little bit and you'll get the full reward. They left and he said, no, we don't want it. So this person hired somebody else and they worked from then till about Asar. And then they said that uh, there's no need for us and we don't want any pay. And you'll be told that just work a little but you will get the full amount. So they will reply the same and they will say that uh, we do not need it. And they will reject it. So this person employed a third group 
and they worked for that last part of the day until sunset. فَاسْتَكْمَلُوا أَجْرَ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ كِلَيْهِمَا They will get the reward of both groups. So they worked half the time, but they'll get double the reward. So that is this Ummayya, that our lives are short, our time spans are short. We've got the day of Jummah, Mubarak multiplied. We've got uh, the, the month of Ramadan multiplied. We've got Laylatul Qadr multiplied. We do a little bit work, but we get much reward. Number five, benefit of Taqwa. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ نُورًا تَمْشُونَ بِهِ That a person will get Noor, a Furqan. That he will be able to differentiate between right and wrong and tawfiq of following Nabi alayhi salatu was salam according to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. And the tafsir say huda. Thus nur will be that they will be given hidayat and guidance. Huda yatabassar bihi min al-ama wal jihala. That a person will be protected from the blindness and the ignorance of this dunya. So, a person will be given this year. Alama Tabri, there's different aqwal, he's, he's, he's made a very interesting note that the promises of this nur is firstly, Allah will give them such a light that they will be on the straight path and they will come to know the Quran and make amal on the Quran and read the Quran. Ma ittiba'i Rasulillah. And that nur will make them follow Nabi of Allah. And the nur of Iman and the nur of guidance. Faqadih Tada. So when a person has taqwa, they will get all of this and all encompassing. Number six, the benefit of taqwa is a person will inherit Jannah paradise. Tilkal Jannatullati Nurithu min ibadina man kana taqiya. That such a Jannah which Allah will give as inheritance. To those servants who have taqwa. So Jannah has been described with these attributes, these magnificent attributes which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to his pious servants, the muttaqeen, to inherit. Number seven, a person's sins will be erased. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ A person's sins will be erased, expiation of guna. Number eight, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ وَيُعْذِمْ لَهُ أَجْرًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase his reward. So for expiation of sins, Allah makut to be explained, that he will get tawfiq to do good and his sins will be forgiven from one salah to another from one jumah to another jumah and and he will get great great reward in akhirah number 10 benefit of taqwa is that good deeds actions will be accepted and this person will become maqbool and when a person is maqbool إِذَا أَحَبَّ فُلَان when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves somebody then Allah will make a'lan in the heavens and likewise it will be transmitted to the earth and it will be told that everybody must love this person so all the farishtas and فَيُوضَعُ لَهُ الْقَبُولِ فِي الْأَرْضِ and he will become maqbool on earth so if you want to become maqbool then the a door is a, a door to Qabooliyat is Taqwa. Innama yataqabalullah minal muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from those who are muttaqeen. So this is uh, the story where Habil and Qabil and at that time a boy and a girl were born and the next set alternately. So the first set boy needed to marry the second set girl and the first set girl married the second said boy. So Qabil looked at his sister and he found that she was more pretty and beautiful than the one that he was supposed to marry. So he told his brother that uh, he 
ولدت معي وهي أحسن من أختك she is more beautiful وأنا أحق أن أتزوج به that I should marry her so they were told that they must each give a sacrifice فقرب they had to give some sacrifice so Qabil used to do plantations farming and Habil had sheep animals so Habil brought the best sheep the most excellent quality the the biggest in size the most beloved to him as the uh, as qurbani and sacrifice and Qabil brought lower grade inferior quality crops and they were told to place it as a sacrifice and a fire came and consumed it and the the sheep was accepted from Habil it was so much accepted that ulama explained mufassirin that that sheep was kept in paradise when Ibrahim slaughtered that same sheep was replaced. When he seen that then he said I'm gonna take revenge and kill you. So he said that I gave I gave my best wealth and you gave Akh Bathumalik, the worst, the most degraded value of your wealth. And in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept except the best. And Allah accepts from the muttaqeen. So he became very upset and he said, I'm going to kill you. So he told him, he said, Aina anta min Allah, where will be where will you be with regards to Allah? Where will your amal take you? And he warned him. But he never take heed and he killed him. So taqwa is very important. Firstly, he never protected his gaze. So that was the first cause. So when a person doesn't protect their gazes, then that can be a great cause for destruction. Nowadays from the internet, different forms, different platforms, a person compromises their taqwa and they are compromising the benefits in dunya and akhirat as well. And it was over a female, so sometimes we presume we are in love, we get caught in the trap, and that is a means of destruction. So many are unmarried, many are married, many different people in different situations get caught. Then we do not give our best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we give the most inferior and low grade, low quality items to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person should be checking themselves all the time, that when I give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we submit an application for a job based on the post, a person will make most effort. And you are very particular about what's in your resume. This life we have is a resume submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based on that, will a person be accepted and based on that will be their status in the Akhirah. So a person should see that we don't compromise our eyes, our ears, our tongue and our thought processes. When that is not compromised, a person fulfills the conditions of taqwa and they fulfill the awamir and commands of Allah and they become from the maqbulin, the chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Abu Dadda used to say that if I had yaqeen an Allah qad taqabbala minni salatan wahidatan, if I knew any one salah of mine was accepted, then and this was more beloved to me min dunya wa ma fiha from all the dunya and it contains why because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he ex accepts from the muttaqin so the fact that my ibadat is accepted means i am from among the mut muttaqin means i am from the chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the amal for today is that being patient when a child dies prematurely, so when somebody's child passes away prematurely, then a person should be very patient. In that a child who dies prematurely, 
disputes with Allah when the parents are entered into Jahannam. So it'll be told to the child, Adkhil abawayka al Jannah. You enter your parents into Jannah and he will drag the parents by his umbilical cord until he takes them into Jannah. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.